time with the Lord and just love him and his sweet presence just pours down over me and in me. He is the one that will give you peace that passes all understanding. I mean, he is your shelter in the time of storm. So put your trust in him. We don't have any excuse if we know the Lord is our Savior, but do we know him as Lord? That's the huge one. I didn't want just fire insurance, but I wanted, uh, well, I came to him because I needed him, and I was under conviction and realized I was a sinner. But then I changed kingdoms, and I got born over again from on high. And I used to be just quiet, and I didn't have much to say. And I guess I can be that way quite a few times even now. But you get me on the subject of my, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I don't know when to quit because he is a good God. We need to renew our first love again. We need to keep on and have the fire of the Holy Ghost working in us to where nothing matters more to us then is my Lord pleased with me? Walking with him day to day, walking in the victorious way. We'll come out, we'll come out with the shout when we walk in the way of the Lord. Amen. It's awesome. Praise and worship. Lord have mercy. I could have basked in it for a long time. But speaking of that time when Pastor was in the hospital, I had Bill, Pastor Bill Sloan was right there with us. And uh, you guys had gone, I think, to get a ID because it was a long day, right? But he was in surgery, and uh, I kept watching the monitor to see if they let me know something. And all of a sudden, there was such a fear gripped me. I knew something was wrong in the operating room. And I stood right there in the middle of the um, waiting room, and I began to pray in the spirit. Without even knowing how to pray, or what to pray for. But I prayed standing right in that one spot. I could almost take you down and show you where I stood somewhere between the monitor and the door. What? And um, when I prayed, I knew I had gotten victory. It was all over. Sister Ben was oh, sitting there with me. You remember what the doctor, he looked strange when he walked what? in. He said, I've just seen a miracle. He said, I had your husband's heart in my hand and turned totally blind. He died. He said, but in just in a few seconds, that heart came back. A healthy, healthy. Some battles, and uh, he had all this. You know, they give you all this junk tape when you do something like that. I said it all out there, and he took it and take it away. He said, A healthy heart doesn't need this. Wow. You don't know God is real. I'm wow. telling you. He did have been in that operating room, and in that, uh, and then the uh, waiting room when he come out to tell us what God had done. I'm telling you, God's a healer. This is Sister Barbara. Amen. You'll have to give your testimony before you leave here. Amen. But we appreciate Pastor Bill and Pastor Anderson and all of the Sister Lyndon and Sister Ben and Brother Ronnie. <laughs> give Brother Ronnie and bless God. He will fix this up. We just to all of you tonight. We're so thankful that you're here. But you know what? There's such a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Don't y'all feel it? Amen. It's just like a Russian. But last night I had an experience that just, I, I can't get over it. Um, I, Brother Dan had handed me the microphone and then he took it back. <laughs> he said, wait a minute, I got one more thing to say, so I'm standing right here. He said, the Lord told me to lay my hand on your neck. And as soon as he touched me, just a split second, I heard the Lord say, I'm breaking off of your neck. And you're talking about, and all of a sudden it's just like I took well, I have never taken drugs, so I don't know the name of what I'm going to do But I thought I went on a high real quick. Because <laughs> I have never felt such peace and release in my life. I felt like I was going to float. And I thought about that all day. And I thought, God, you're so awesome. I thought I had about every experience I could have. <laughs> but I'm telling you, that's God. Amen. Well, I'm going to be quiet and turn it over to Pastor. Let him do what he needs to do, or you'll have to
Yes. What? And Brother Jack brought some tomatoes to give away. So, so God's good. Yeah. Pastor Bill, wow. Pastor Andy, the first time I met y'all, y'all were climbing over sins. <laughs> Don't ever put climbing. It's awesome. It's awesome what God does. He's so awesome. Well, if you brought the Lord a, a love gift, let's give it to him. I believe he's worthy, don't you? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Good to see you, everybody. Listen, if you want to do your will in here, you see Sister Sue. How many of you Okay. 
I met a man right after that who was a chaplain up the nursing home. He was trying to recruit pastors to come up to that nursing home. Uh, you know, I mean, praise God. I mean, and so I said, well, me and you need to talk. Uh, and so I talked to you. Next thing I know, I'm going to the nursing home. Well, we got another fellow in our church, uh, Brother Allen, and he's going to the assisted living home in Portland as well. He's been doing a Bible study there now right about five years. Uh, he's been going up there. Awesome man. He, he, he's a testimony in himself. But anyhow, we started going to the nursing home. Then right after that, praise God, I, I was. we had church. I got out of church, walked outside, and there's this Hispanic fellow standing in the back lot back there. And he says, are you the pastor? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, can I talk to you? And I said, sure. Yeah, you know, so he told me who he was. And he wanted to know if he could hold services in our church for his, his Hispanic congregation. And I told him, I said, well, man. I said, give me your name. Write your name and your phone number now. I said, I'll get back with you. Yeah, you know. And so I talked to a couple of the guys in the church, you know, Kind of get their opinion on it. They said, man, let the man hold service. Now, Brother David Hernandez, his group's been with us now for, they've been with us about all this time too, about four or five years anyway. They've been with us now, and he holds services for them uh, and folks, you know. Uh, 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 Brother Alfredo, Dios le bendiga. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. I'm learning. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Praise God. But, but not even that's the testimony. Let me tell you about what's been going on. We've been plowing that ground, plowing that ground, plowing that ground at the nursing home. You know, because I'm going to tell you, going to the nursing home, you don't, you don't see a whole lot coming back, you know, when you go. But, because a lot of those people up there, they deal with a lot of stuff, you know. But God is so good. Let me tell you what happened here just recently. I praise God. There was two different people that I met in that nursing home. Uh, one of them, uh, his name was Carl. Carl had right? Big old gruffy guy, got long, scraggly, greasy hair, long, scraggly, greasy beard. You know, I, I'm just telling you what the man was, okay? I mean, you know, and, and, and but he was a Vietnam veteran, and I seen it on his hat, right? And I, I walked up to him, and I said, was you a, a Vietnam veteran? He said, yeah. I said, thank you for your service. I shook his hand, you know, and I just got to talk to him. He wouldn't talk to nobody, right? You know, when he come to the Lord, he didn't want to talk to nobody. Well, that man got to listen. He wouldn't come to the service, but he was in the hallway, and he got to listen. Then one day, next thing I know, there's Carl Hammer sitting out there in the service, praise God. I never could get him to confess with me, right? But he was sitting out there, he raised his hand and said, praise Jesus. Yeah. But he didn't know who Jesus was, and I shared Jesus with him. Well, I told him, because I couldn't get him to confess with me, but I told him, I said, Carl, I said, you know, oh, I said, if you just believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, you ask him to be your Savior, I said, you can do it by yourself. Yeah, you Lord, yeah. I come in one day, right? Carl says, I walked up to him, you know. He, come here. You want me to get a little closer? He didn't want to speak out too loud, you know. But he says, he says, I did. I said, you did what, Carl? He said, I received the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. You know, so, well, here a few weeks back, I met another man in there. And he was a retired Navy man, been in the Navy for 30 years. First time I'd ever seen him in the service. I'd never seen him there before at all. He was sitting up there when it was over with. He said, can I talk to you? I said, yes, sir. His name is Albert. Right? And Albert says, he looked at me. He says, I'm not going to be here long. That's what he told me. He said, he said, there's not a part on my body that don't have something wrong with it. He said, I'm not going to be here long. He said, but I have got to get things right with God. You know? And I said, well, okay, Albert. And so me and Albert talked for a few minutes and and I started talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, look, he said, I understand God. He said, but I don't know who Jesus is. And I said, well, Albert. <coughs> I said, let me show you. So I started showing him in the Word of God. Right? He's okay, okay. Well, I got the whole church praying for Albert. I mean, we've been lifting Albert up to left and right in our church. Right? You know, and then uh, me and Sister Carol, we went up to the hospital. We got put in the hospital. We went and visited. We talked to him a little up in the hospital. And then uh, one day I, I told uh, Brother Allen, the guy that goes to the other nursing home, I said, look here, Brother. I said, you want to ride up to the nursing home with me? I said, I'm going to go talk to Albert. Okay? Yeah, he said, I'll go up there with you. Me and Brother Allen, we went into Albert's room. And we commenced to talking. We opened up the Word of God, and we started showing him through the Word of God about Jesus Christ. Okay? I mean, and Albert asked some good questions. 
I mean, I'm going to tell you, Albert put you on the spot. You know what I mean? But he asked some good questions, some tough questions, and the Lord dropped the answers on me right, I mean, right there on the spot. All of a sudden, Albert said, I believe. He said, I believe. I said, praise God. I said, Albert, I said, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord, the one that came here for your sins? He died on the cross, and he rose on the third day, and he's forever with the Father. He said, I believe. I said, Albert, I said, do you want to be born again? And he said, I do. Right? And I said, Albert, I said, do you want to be born again right now? He said, yes, I do, praise God. Next thing I know, man, he hardly got too much strength in his hands. But, man, his hands went up. Alan got on one side. I got on the other side. We was holding up his hands. Praise God. And he was praying. He was confessing. And I mean, you could feel the spirit of God in that place. Albert got born again. And he wanted to be baptized. He said, I got to be baptized. I said, let's we'll figure it out, Albert. Right, you know, and uh, and uh, I told him, I said, look. I said, but you know this. Because, see, I told Albert from the very beginning, right? Because he, he, in Albert's mind, he could die any time. I said, but when he asked me about Jesus, he was asking questions. I said, Albert, I said, you understand this, right? I said, the word of God says, seek and you shall find. I said, as long as you're truly seeking these answers, you ain't going nowhere. Okay? I said, you're going to stay here till you find. And you'll get the chance to make that decision. So I said, you don't worry about that. Well, old Albert got born again. Right? Yeah. Praise God. We, I went back up there to see him again because I was working on his getting him baptized. Albert, he, he was sitting up on the bed. He said, man, he said, this stuff's working for me. Right? <laughs> and, uh, that's what he told us. Y'all have to know Albert. Right? He said, this stuff's working for me. I said, what stuff are you talking about, Albert? He said, this Jesus stuff. Right? He said, I haven't felt this good in a long time. <laughs> I said, praise God. Well, this is long story short, right? Because this is the testimony. We went up there this Tuesday, praise God. And we got Albert baptized. Hallelujah. It was awesome. It was awesome. Not right only that, but somebody else sat in the crowd and said, I want to be baptized. Yeah. You know? And I said, bring him on up here. I said, do you believe Jesus Christ is Lord? Do you accept him as your Lord? Sir? Yes, I do. <laughs> so, listen. The Lord will lay stuff on your heart sometimes. Yes. Just be open. I, I didn't know nothing about going to a nurse. And we've been plowing this ground for a long time. Yeah. The Hispanic ministry is going fine. You know, and whatnot. everything's going good with that right there. And that's just what the Lord told me. But that's my testimony. It gets me so excited when I think about that. I mean, praise God. You know, I look forward to getting to heaven. I'm glad I'm going to see Carl. I just believe I'm going to see Carl up there. Right, you know, and whatnot. And I'm going to see Albert up there too. And we're going to have the biggest time. I mean, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God's awesome, baby. Awesome. Amen. He is. I think something's going on in the house. Yes. I'm shaking inside. Glory. I'm going to say something before I get started here. Last night I, I was preaching, I had, uh, I'm going to make a correction on a, something I said when I was talking about the children of Israel. When they went up to Ai, when they got, you know, their men got killed, I said 38. The Bible says 36. <laughs> so forgive me for that. That shows my humanity, amen? <laughs> Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we yield to you right now. And Lord, we say, decrease us, Lord, and you bring the increase. Lord, you knew everyone was going to be in the house tonight. Lord, you know the need of every man, woman, boy, and girl here, Lord. And Lord, you have something special for each one of us, Lord. Help us to be obedient. Help every one of us in the house to be obedient to your call, Lord. To your move, Lord, to your voice. Lord, that none will leave this house unsatisfied, Lord. And in need, dear God, of anything, Lord, in our lives. 
give you glory and honor and praise for you deserve it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Last night we were talking about how important you are in the body of Christ, how every member is important, and how that, um, how significant you are, and how how the weakest member of the body goes is how the body goes. Amen? Sometimes we're trying to get over the hump in the body of Christ of the church, and we're wondering what's going on, and, and there's something going on in somebody's life because we're all individuals, but we're all members of the same body. Amen? So you're a part of the body of Christ no matter what. And how you go in your life affects the body of Christ. We were talking about how that... God is ministering to each one of us to get on board and get the same vision, get the same purpose, and get our life in order so that the body of Christ can move forward and do the things that God has designed for us to be. Amen? And there's a way for that. We all, and we're talking about the blatant sin, open sin that people commit and confess to be Christians. And that, that's what really affects the body of Christ in a negative way. And we know that. And we know that how that the children of Israel did and how that they lost the battle and God revealed to Joshua that there was sin in the camp and all those things and he had to deal with it and all that. And God did that because he loves his people, amen? He does that and, you know, we're living in a society and in a church world today that doesn't deal with anything, amen? We just allow everything and we just, uh, you know, we just say there's no sin anymore and we just rejoice and we rejoice in our sin. And that that's not the holiness of God. That's not godliness. That's not, you know, a heart that loves Jesus. Because when you love Jesus, you want to not sin. Amen. You want to stay away from sin. You do not want to be partakers of sin. You want to please the Lord with all your heart. That's your mission. My mission in life is to please the Father. Amen. But that is my goal. Because I want him to look at me and say, that is my son and I am well pleased with him. Amen. That's my ultimate goal is to seek, him, seek the Lord and for him to look at me and be pleased with me. Amen? And you know, I hear it all the time, and yes, God loves us whether we're good or whether we're bad. Yes, he does. Amen? But does are we pleased? He pleased with us. Amen? It's another question. Is God pleased with my life? And my, my uh, uh, ultimate goal in my heart is I want the Lord to be pleased with me because when, I, when he is pleased with me, he anoints me and he blesses me and he encourages me. He gives me a joy in my heart. He puts fire in my spirit and he does those things so that I can be a reflection of who he is. Amen. That's who I want to be a reflection of is my father. I want, I want people when they look at me, I want them to see God. Amen. I want them to see me because in myself, I'm nothing. Amen. I'm a man. I'm a failure in my own self. And I can't get up here and boast and tell you how great of a man of God I am because that's a lie. It's all, it's he that's within me that's good. Amen. If you see good in me, it's Jesus. If you see bad in me, that's Dan. Amen. But tonight, you know, I want to just get on a little point here. I want to talk to you about, I don't know about you, but it, my Christian walk been almost 40 years. I want you to realize that most of that time I've lived in the fire. Amen. I've lived in the fire, you know, of some sort, because when you begin to seek the Lord and you commit to God, there's going to be many battles and trials and, and enemy think, you know, tricks and traps and, and things come against you. You're going to have a lot of uh, devastating things happen in your life. Uh, just today, we got some devastating news, naturally, but I want you to know something. Uh, we serve a true and living God who is able to do all things, and we i got to cast all of our cares upon Him. I gotta keep the same faith in the midst of devastation as I do. And when I'm on the mountain top, I want you to know something. Uh, I just want to get rid of the mountains and the mountains. I'm gonna walk a faith, a faithful walk with God. Say, Lord, here I am. No matter what I'm seeing, no matter what's going on, I want to be a reflection of who you are. Hallelujah. I've had friends in the past who've been, uh, I've said they've been emotional yo-yos. Amen. They were up and down. They uh, they went in as deep in the valley as they did, as high on the mountain. And you would see it, the expressions on them. They would they would just look so like a zombie. They were so sad. And, and you know, I'd say, what's wrong? And, and you know, it's just like the world just, uh, uh, just gave up on them. Or they just 
I don't know what happened to him. I said, just last night, you were praising and shouting God, you know, praising his name in church, and today you look like you've lost your best friend. <coughs> hallelujah. We need to be consistent in our walk with God. Amen. Right. Consistent. Hallelujah. I'd rather see your smiling face any day of the week than just to see you smile one day, and the next day you're just so far down we can't even find where you're at. <laughs> God wants that in your life. He wants consistency in your life. And anybody that teaches any kind of uh, business teachings or teaching you how to build a business or anything like that, there's a plan in place for everything. There's steps for everything. And in your walk with God, there's steps for everything that we're going to do. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about the Apostle Paul. I want to talk to you about, we sang about that amazing grace earlier, but I want to talk to you about, talk to you about some sufficient grace. I want you to know tonight that uh, no matter what you're going through in your life, God's grace is sufficient for you. Amen. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're feeling it or whether you're not. God's grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. When, when Saul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, and whenever he met the king of glory, hallelujah, I want you to know his life was changed. And in that moment's time, he, his life was utterly changed. And I want you to know something. Uh, when he asked the question, I want you to know the first commission and the first prophecy that Jesus gave him was Saul. Paul, you're going to have to suffer many things for my name's sake. Yeah. Hallelujah. What a prophetic word. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you come up here with a prophetic word, you don't want me to say you're going to have to suffer many things for my name's sake, do you? But I want you to know if you sell out to Jesus and you give your life to him, I want you to know you're going to have to suffer many things for his name's sake. Amen. It's not going to be a bed of roses. It's not going to be all hunky-dory. But I do want you to know that through the midst of all that, the joy of the Lord can be your strength. It will lift you high. Your faith in God will take you through. Even when it looks like there's nowhere to turn at all, I want you to know that He will raise you up and bring you through because He is grace and sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Amen. God's grace, His sufficient grace. Amen. I'm not talking about this greasy grace that the church preaches now. This grace that just allows you to live any way you want. And this grace that just tells you that uh, it doesn't matter. God's forgave you your past, your present, your future sins. You can just do whatever you want. And God understands that's a lie. Amen. That's a lie that he forgets all his sins. I want you to know you must repent of your sins. Amen. When you sin, you repent and ask God to forgive you. And then you'll find God's grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to read some scripture, I think. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Bear with me, I'm still shaking on the inside. God's, you know, the Bible says he's going to shake everything to be shaken. And he does that because, you know, when you shake, remember those old flower grapes? Did you have one of them when you <laughs> those round things you put flour in and if you sift it, it sifts through there. Yes, I know mom had one, I know. It had a little, little handle on it. You turn it, it sift that. But that's what God does with you. Hallelujah. God's got a sifter, amen? And he puts you in there and, you know, he starts shaking that thing because he's getting all that stuff out of there that don't need to be in there. He's separating the good from the bad, amen? That's what God does. And he's got a refiner's fire that he uses too. He's got, he's got fire that comes into your life and burns things out and, and gets you to a place where you need to be. He's, he's cleaning us up and he's shaking us off so that we'll be able to do his work. Amen. Do his will. All right, chapter 12. Got it there in your Bible? Look, I got a new Bible today. It's got giant print. It's awesome. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, when you get over 30, a little bit over 30, you know, and look, when you get over there, how leave, every little bit helps. Praise God. Listen, if anybody can get a new heart right there and get a miracle, I knew it's Brother Billy, right? Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anybody loves Jesus anymore, amen? I don't know if anybody's been any more faithful. And, you know, for a doctor to take that heart out and turn black and the doctor's eyes bug out real big, and all of a sudden God puts a brand new in it. Man, I would just love to see his face, Pastor. Amen. I would just love to see it at that moment. You saw it. And I want you to know something. Hallelujah. That's what God does when you get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. He takes that old black heart out of you. And he puts a brand new heart inside of you. Amen. You know what that means? God just renewed that man and restored his youth and his body. Hallelujah. I want you to know something. God's grace is sufficient for us tonight. Praise God. Praise God.
Praise God. The Apostle Paul and all preachers of the Bible wouldn't be very popular in the church today. Would they? No way. Paul, I was preaching last night. It's a pretty hard word. Paul preaching to the Corinthians. Amen. I told you they were special in his heart because he wrote two big long letters to them. Amen. And when he came to them, he didn't just pat them on the back and say, oh, praise God, everything's going to go on hunky dory right there. No, he was confronting sin in the church. He was, right. he was giving, but he wasn't just confronting sin. He was preaching, telling the solution. He was giving them the opportunity to repent. And he was telling them what to do to, to move forward because he loved them. And he, he's doing the same thing. And, you know, when he's looking in the church today, they'd say, oh, Paul, you're not exhorting us. You're not lifting us up. And well, he'd say, oh, yes, I am. If you'll just obey the word, you'll be lifted up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah. Man, God wants to raise up warriors in the kingdom. Amen? I've said this a thousand times here. We're not but the sissies. We're God's warriors. We're warriors in the kingdom of God. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen? If we did, we could beat it. If we couldn't beat it, we'd shoot it. Amen? We could kill it. But I want you to know something. We don't fight. We got some spiritual wickedness in high places out here. I want you to know. I want you to know the Bible says that in the last days, evil men and seducers would wax worse and worse. Amen? I don't expect the world to get any better, but I expect the church to arise to a new level that we've never been. And I expect God's glory to be among us, and we're going to shine brighter than we've ever shown because we are coming under the cover of God's word. And the glory of God will be upon us, and we will shine brighter because the world is darker, and they need to see the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We went out to the store today and we was talking to the cashier there and invited her to church. And she almost started crying right there at the, at the cashier's place. And the boss was the girl, the other girl came up and kind of interrupted the situation. But people's lives are in turmoil. That's right. They don't know where to turn. They're looking for an answer. And we got the answer. Hallelujah. You know, we've got the we've got the solution for their lives. And we need to tell them and begin to lead them and show them that there's a better way. Amen. Yeah. Even though your life might be turned upside down, it looks like there's nowhere to turn. It looks like uh, you know, our uh, family's broken up, losing jobs, our health is deteriorating. All those things are happening, but I want you to know there's a way. Hallelujah. There's a man in the Christ Jesus who can set you free. He can turn your life around, but you got to submit and commit to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen. We shouldn't tell people to get saved and never all your troubles are going to be over. We should tell them all your sins are going to be covered by the blood. Amen? We should tell them everything's just going to be all perfect and everything's over with. We should train them up and say, look, hallelujah, you just enlisted in the army of God. Hallelujah. Amen? You're in the body of Christ. Amen? We've got all kinds of leaders that will train you and teach you what you need to do. And you've got a manual there. You've got a, a manual that will teach you every step of the way if you'll commit to it and get your heart in that thing. It will lead you and you'll raise up to be a great warrior in the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what we need. Amen. More warriors. And people don't want to fight. I mean, they want to fight, but they don't want to fight the right fight. I believe we want to fight each other. I don't want to fight you. I want to fight the devil and defeat him. Amen. Because he's the one that's causing all the problems. Hallelujah. Even the people in the church that don't know it, that the devil's using, if they'll just repent and turn to God, God will raise them up and make them a part of the body and help the body to move forward in the power of God. Amen. Let's read. I bet some of you think I can't read. Hallelujah. Because I keep saying that. Amen. It is doubtless, verse 1, chapter 12. I'm reading now the New King James here. This, that's the only one that had the big giant print in. Hallelujah. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Listen, Paul lived in a place in his life that he lived by revelation and visions. Amen? Why? The Bible wasn't wrote. He was writing it. Amen? He was writing it. Now, what was God doing? He was being led by revelation and visions. He was in the presence of the Lord. God was revealing, does God still do that? Absolutely, amen. God wants us to have visions and get revelation because the only thing that will change your life about the word is if you catch the revelation of it, amen. If it gets revelated, revealed to you in your spirit, 
And when it's revealed to you in your spirit, it will begin to get in there and change your life because you're changed from glory to glory by the power of God, by His Word. And it's important for you. Paul's telling us, listen, God showed me all this by revelation and visions. Now, people, if you say you have a vision, people look at you like you're some kind of freak. But it, listen, if you're having visions and getting revelation, you're right where God wants you. Amen. He wants to use you to help bring revelation to the church so that we can get the scales off our eyes and we can raise up and do the work of God. I'm talking about the real work of God. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying you're not doing something for God. Do you understand that, right? But there's greater things that God wants to do. Greater things. And that, that, that calls the price for you and I all to walk together in unity. Amen. God bring churches together. It's a miracle for churches to come together. It is. It's a miracle for us to come together and worship together because we have our little walls built. Amen. But I want you to know there's no, there's no walls inside the kingdom of heaven. There's a wall around it. Hallelujah. And that seven city's got a wall on 12 gates. Praise God. All right, where are we at? I know a man in Christ 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Sister Dot was having experience last night. She was telling you about Sometimes, when the glory gets on you, you do get high, don't you? Hallelujah. Listen, I remember one time when I was a younger preacher, sometimes you get a little proud, pride when you're a preacher, you know? Or when you're a good singer. Or when you're good whatever you are, you're, you get very proud of it and boastful a little bit. Well, I didn't know I was, but at one time, I was preaching by the church I was pastoring. And I thought, this is a pretty good message. <laughs> I thought that in my heart. I thought in my heart. And the Lord, all of a sudden, I came out of my body and I was standing. I was up here and my body was just a preacher. Just a wave. My body was standing, my arms are going like I do. And I was standing there and the Lord said, it's not you, it's me. Wow. It's not you, it's me. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see that. Amen. I see that. And listen, it's not us. It's him. I don't want to learn to preach. I don't. I don't want to. It's very easy to learn. It is. We got millions of preachers all over America and the world who know how to preach. But I want you to know something. I want to depend on the Lord where I can have some anointing in my life. Where he can go and be planted in the hearts of men and women. Where it will penetrate the hardness of men's hearts and begin to let the fire of God begin to burn in them. Listen, it's not enough just to learn how to preach or learn how to sing. It takes something that God say, anoint me, Lord. Give me a, a power and fire in my heart that I can be effective for your glory. Just cause you holler and scream is that anointing? No. But I tell you one thing, I'm passionate about what I do. Amen. I am passionate about what I do. You don't have to do what I do. But this is how I do it. Amen. This is how I this is how when I feel the anointing of God on my life, I like it. And it makes me want to do it more. Praise God. It makes me want to do it because I'm here to please the Lord, not you. Hallelujah. I just know that you. Hallelujah. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. He was caught up in the paradise. Took a trip. Hallelujah. And heard the inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. And lest I should be exalted above measure. By the abundance of the re revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that I might depart, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Listen to me for a minute. God chose Israel because they were the smallest people. They were the smallest in number. God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God empowers people who you know, would not even imagine ever that could do something for God. I've seen 
old grandmas that was that tall and bent over like this and sitting in the church and you think they couldn't do anything when the Spirit of the Lord came on them, they would pop up out of that thing and start preaching the Word more powerful than you hear most people ever preach the Word. Amen? And because God had chosen them because they were committed to Jesus and they were the foolish things of the world when people looked upon them and said, oh, that uh, God can't use that person, but I want you to know God's the one that picks us, amen? God's the one that chooses us, amen? This is not a, a uh, job, what is it, a job interview where I'm just going to see if you'll make a good preacher. Listen, God needs to be the one to pick you. God needs to be the one to put his hand on you and say, you're the one I want. You're the man, you're the woman that I've chosen to put this anointing on tonight. Hallelujah. Listen, there never been a preacher in the generations of my family ever. We were a bunch of Drunks and wife beating fools down to the generation my family's was. And when God saved me and when he picked me, and when I told my dad God had called me to preach, he was shocked. Hallelujah. But he was happy shocked. Amen. He wasn't even saved. But a grin came across his face and he goes, well, and a tear came out of his eye right there. Hallelujah. I got to see him saved before he died. Got to baptize him in the creek. Hallelujah. Amen. He's waiting over heaven with for me one of these days. Amen. Right. My mom's over there. I got brother and sister just five months ago. I lost a sister. Went home to be with the Lord, 65 years old. But I want you to know she made peace with God. Hallelujah. And she's ready. And one day I'll see her over there. We have a son that we lost a long time ago. And I want you to know they're over there working hard. Hallelujah. Uh, they're not just over there sitting back cruising around. Listen, they got things to do because I want you to know there's a time coming when all oh, things are going to stop. Hallelujah. And when he comes back, I want you to know when he blows that trumpet, I want you to know that we that which are alive remain, we're going to be caught up together to be with the Lord forever with him. Hallelujah. Whew. Hallelujah. I think about that sometimes. Because I'm from a big family, you know, 20 of us originally, siblings. That's right, I'm 18. That's what's wrong with me. I was a late-term baby. I say that all the time. Hallelujah. We're down to nine. Down to nine of us. Us boys were getting worried because there were only three of us left. And we thought, God, we're all going to die before the, the girls are going to outlive all of us. But my sister, she just broke that trend there. But the great thing is, peace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, the Christian life is the greatest life there is on the face of the earth. It's the only way you get to heaven. Amen. The only way. Giving your life to Jesus. Him being the way, the truth, the life. But it's not always a bed of roses. we got, we got to stay in the balance of the doctrines. You know, the prosperity and the, the battlefield. It's either one or the other, you know. It's not. It's in the middle there somewhere. Hallelujah. God's going to bless us? Yes. Are we going to have troubles? Listen, listen you're not going to be blessed and never have any problems. Some doctors teach that. Yeah. That's not biblical. But I want you to know, just read the Apostle Paul's writings and see. Yeah. Amen. Through much persecution, you're going to enter into the kingdom of God. We're going to be persecuted for who we are because we name the name of the Lord. But I want you to know, stand firm on the word of God. Listen, it looks like situations have got into our lives that just nothing, it seems like there's no way. This world system is controlled by the devil, amen? This world system is set up like our judicial system and all that is all corrupt. It's so corrupt, there's no truth in it, but I want you to know that we serve the king of justice, amen? We serve the one who will bring justice. He will bring holiness and truth to all that's on the earth one day, but I want you to know right now we're fighting against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places, but I thank God that greater is he that's in me. He might knock me down. He might get me in a headlock. He might be kicking on me and stuff, but I want you to know it, it's going to make me mad enough. I'm going to get up and say, in the name of Jesus, devil, get off me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Get off me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've always had to fight because I've so many kids, and they was all older than me when I got, you know, when I was little. So everybody was kicking me around. So they made me mean, and then all my cousins and nephews and all that. So I got mean on them, so I learned how to fight and all that kind of stuff. And I said, Lord, that came in handy when I got saved. Because, listen, I'm still in a fight. This is the greatest fight I've ever been in. I want you to know that I'm on the winning side with Jesus. God's grace is sufficient for us. I'm preaching to the choir here tonight, amen. 
God's grace is sufficient for me. Amen. For my family, for my kids, for my grandkids. God's grace is sufficient for us. We've got to hold on to the profession of faith. We've got to believe God. We cannot let go because God's word is the truth no matter what our eyes say. Hallelujah. That's why we walk by faith, not by sight, right? We walk by faith. We, we call those things as not as though they are. Hallelujah. We do that by faith. we got to have faith in God's word because God's word is the ultimate judge of all things. Amen. God is good. He's awesome. He wants to teach us some lessons. He wants to get us to a place to where that we say, Lord, send me in there, Lord. Send me in there. God, God has got so much for us to do. He's got he's me. You know, I want my life to be changed from this point. Coming out here, when I go back to Virginia, I want my life to be changed. I do not want to fall back into the rut or get into a place where I just get complacent. I want to say, Lord, help me to be elevated above that place. Fill in all those old ruts. Lord, help me that I will I go forth in the power of the Spirit and I will do whatever it is to say and do that you want me to do. Yes. Pastor Bill, you're talking about the rest homes. That's where I started preaching. Rest homes. The forgotten people. Yeah. They're forgotten. My wife and I, since we've been married, we've always had a love for the old people. Because one thing they were going to get old. Amen. Yeah. If the Lord tarries, and we're going to need somebody to minister to us. Amen. But we always have. We and one, one time in my life, I called myself the closer because, you know, how baseball, in the end, they bring a closer in to close the game out. That's kind of what we was because, you know, people call us in because people were dying, you know, in the rest homes and the hospitals. And we'd go in and pray with them. I, I've been in and people have been in comas. And, you know, they call me to pray for them. They were, Daddy's lost. He's never been saved, you know. And, and I say, God, you know, you got you got to do something here, Lord. You know, and, and went in and prayed this one man. And, uh, the Lord told me exactly what to do when I was walking down the hallway. He just said, go in and stand by his side of his bed and just speak his name. Just call his name. And I said, all right, Lord. And I went in there and I stood beside of him and I said, I just called his name out. And his eyes opened just like that. And I said, can you hear me? And he said, yes. And he had, he'd been in a coma for a while. And I was there. I said, you want to know Jesus as your personal Savior? And he said, yes. I mean, he, tears was coming out of his eyes right there like that. And we prayed, and he prayed, and he repented right there in that bed. He couldn't even move, only his head. And he prayed, and he cried. His, his son was with me, and he was an old man, and he was with me. This guy was really old. And he prayed and cried, and the Spirit of the Lord just came into place, and we were just rejoicing. And, and as soon as we got done praying, he just went off about... Fifteen minutes later, he went home to hit Jesus. Amen. And we went outside, and they had a big family out there, and they were all arguing out there. And they were what? And Daddy was gone, and they were going, "Oh, Daddy died and went to hell." I go, "Oh no, he did. Oh no, he didn't." I said, "Jesus saved him. Hallelujah." Uh, how do I didn't see it? I said, just call you never seen a million dollars. Don't mean it's true. Hallelujah. Don't mean it's not real. I said, Jesus woke him up and saved him and took him home. Hallelujah. That's how much God's mercy is. And God's grace is a vision for us. And listen, I want you to know something. God's in control of it. Not us. Hallelujah. All he wants us to do is be obedient. Like you said, Bill, amen. He wants you to be obedient. God will open the doors. That's what he does. And then it's up to us to walk in the door. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Listen, nothing's impossible with God. Right. And there's been times in my life that I didn't, and there's times right now, right now at this moment, I don't know what God's going to do. I don't know in certain situations that we're in. I don't know, but I know God's going to do something. Amen. Amen. I know the Lord is going to do something because God is faithful. God is faithful, and we live for Him, and we honor Him with our life. The things always turn out the way I want them to. That's what not. When you look at your life, you be honest with yourself. I'm going to be honest with myself, but am I pleased with my life at this moment? No. Not with my life and God is what I'm talking about. I want more from God. I want, And God wants more from me. Amen? And so as we collaborate, you know, I want to get to that place and say, Lord, whatsoever it is that you want me to do, I want to do it. I want to do it, Lord. I want to do it. I want to be so sensitive to hearing God's voice again, you know, and where he's whispering into my mind, in my heart, in my ears, and saying things to me that I will react and I will do exactly just out of obedience because of my love for him. Amen. 
We as a church, we have the greatest opportunity in the history of mankind to do the greatest things for the kingdom of God right now. Amen. The enemy's job is to divide us, to separate us, to separate you from your relationship with God, to separate you from the body of Christ, to separate you from the word, from your prayer life, from your worship life. That's what he wants to do. He wants to get you to where you're homeless and you and you just give up and you just say, there's no use. I, I've been praying. I haven't seen any prayers yet. you, you got to keep ringing on those prayer bells. Amen. you got to keep ringing them and keep and say, Lord, I'm right here. Lord, I, I'm going to ring these things till you hear me, till you answer me, Lord. And whenever you begin to keep ringing and be faithful, God's going to give you an answer. Amen. Amen. He will. He's going to give it to you. Yeah. Some of you need answers right now in your life. Yes. And God is faithful. And he, he wants you to seek. Yes. He wants you to knock. He wants you to ask. He wants you to keep faithful and keep doing what he, what the Word says. And if you'll do those things in God's time. I don't know when God's time is sometimes, do you? We've been praying about certain situations in our life. And we thought, Lord, this has got to be it. This has got to be it. This is it's got to happen now, and when it don't happen, we're going. Lord, what's God going on? Lord, this has got to be it. This, Lord, this has got to be it. You know, we just keep. You got to keep holding faithful, keep keep declaring the word because listen, hold on to the declaration of God's word because one day you're going to see it manifest in your life. And you're going to say, "There it is, Hallelujah! There's the answer. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what you was doing all the time, Lord. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen." Yes. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. That endures temptation means that you got to pass the test. I don't, I don't like tests. I don't like paper tests. Do you? I don't mind Bible tests. I like that. You know, where you can just do Bible questions. But I'm talking about life tests. God's. There's many tests come in our life. Blessed are you if you pass the test. Amen. That means you endure it. You follow through with it. You you make it through it. Hallelujah. And you overcome it because you've got a crown of life waiting for you. You've got a reward that God's going to give you. Amen. Even here, before we get to heaven, God's going to reward you for your faithfulness to Him. And and I want I don't know about you, but I kind of like rewards. Amen. I like I like blessings too. Amen. I like stuff. Amen. I like the Lord to bless me, but I, I love to feel that glory of the Lord. When I can stand there and when they're singing those songs, I can just lift my hands and I can feel uh, heaven's oil coming down and from the top of my head and just flowing down my neck. I love that feeling. Amen. I love to feel God's hand brushing over me. I love to feel Him saying, good job. Yeah. And I love, to, I love for Him to do that for me because, listen, He's affirming me as a son. Hallelujah. We need that, though. No, we need that affirmation. We all do, no matter how old we get. We need that. That's why when it's older we get, we turn back in our second childhood, they call it. Amen. I mean, think about it for a minute. The older you get, as you're losing people around you, you're losing your family, you begin to long for those that you had when you was a child. You begin to long for mother and dad. You begin to long for those that you grew up with. And you begin to think about them a lot. It takes you out of your state that you're in now, out of your problems and out of your situations. When my mom, when she was before she passed away, she talked about her mother, who was had been dead for years. She died when I was two years old, and she began, you know, began to talk about old the old times and certain type things. You know, when she wasn't medicated to where she didn't know where she was at. Listen, God's affirm us as sons and daughters, and He says. No matter what you're going through, no matter what happens to you in your life, if you're put in a place and you're just rotting away, which a lot of people are, in rest homes and those kind of places, and when nobody's there to love them and stuff, keep loving them. Hallelujah. That's what they love. That's, That's what they right. need. Amen. That's right. You can see life come back into it. Just somebody paying attention to it. And whenever we get to that point in our life, and if nobody's there for us, Jesus is right there. Yes. He's right there. Hallelujah. He walks right into the room and stands right there with them and lets them know that it's all right, daughter. I'm getting ready to take you home. Hallelujah. If the whole world forsakes us and leaves us, Jesus will never leave us. Amen? Amen. Listen, this happens in families and people's lives. And I hope it never happens to any of us. 
But if all your family forsakes you and cast you out, Jesus will always be there for you. Amen. Amen. He will always be there for you. If everybody says that's it, I'm done with you. Cast me out. Put me aside. Jesus will be right there. Hallelujah. And listen, when I get to heaven, my reward just going to be as good as yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My crown's going to be just as pretty as yours. Amen. Anyway, we're going to take them all off and cast them at his feet because he deserves all of it. Amen. He's the one that deserves the glory and the honor. All of us, all of us, when I first started preaching, I said this here lots of times. I'll say it one more time. Preachers just get up and talk about their loved ones that went on. And at that point in my life, I didn't have that many that I knew of. But now there's a whole boatload of them that's went on to be in the Lord. Friends and family, people we, we pastored and people you ministered to, and friends you've met down through the years. And listen, that's going to be a big, big reunion right. one of these days. And we got to keep our focus on the Lord and our hope in the Lord and not forget what God has done for us. Because he redeemed me. He took my black heart out and put a new heart of flesh in there that I could feel his love. Amen. He, he gave every one of us that new heart so that we could be a reflection of who he is. Amen. The one, of the, one of the things I want to say, and then we'll close. We don't need to fashion our church like the world. We need to fashion it like him. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't need him to... To be, I read that quote A.J. Tozer said today, and I can't remember word for word, but he said that we will never make an impact on the world trying to be like them. We must be separate from them so that they will come out from where they are into where we are. Amen. I said it last night. I asked you a question. I said, when you look at the church of the world, do you see much difference? Pretty bad, huh? But things are going to change, amen? Because we're going to begin to see the Lord like never before. God's going to raise us up with a new glory. And they're going to say, look at that. Look at those people. I, listen, if we take Brother Billy out there and tell him, and he tells that testimony about that heart, that's going to get people's attention, Amen. You might need to do that, do an interview on Facebook, brother, and do that and put that out there, amen, and tell your testimony. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? To yeah. be able to hear that and to see that and to see the glory of God. Amen. Stand with me. I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah.